Climate change is certainly a challenge to our food system. Late and unpredictable rains, high temperatures, shortening rainfall season, and seasonal changes in the timing of rainfall are common complaints today from farmers. Climate change seems to have compounded the vulnerability of peasant farmers in plunging them into food insecurity and abject poverty, resulting in failure of crops, death of livestock, and low crop yields, all of which have led to decline in agricultural productivity. The Peasant Farmers Association seeking to solve these challenges, but how? We're joined right now in studio uh, by Charles Eyaba, who is Program Officer of Peasant Farmers Association of Ghana, but he's simply a farmer. Good morning and thanks for being here. Charles, good morning. Good morning. How are you? Thank you. Great. All right. Uh, we'll also be joined via phone by the Director of Meteorological Services Department, Mr. Kweku Ayuk, uh, who will join us on the same conversation. Uh, so have I wrapped up the problems, the challenges that farmers are facing today with the weather? Yeah, I think uh, you couldn't have said it better. You know, um, for the past uh, five years, if you are uh, following events in the field, you realize that there are serious challenges to the extent that majority of farmers are actually leaving the field. This is all because we have limited supply of water. Mm. and due to, is due to um, limited rainfall, erratic rainfall pattern, and short duration of uh, rainfalls. Now, apart from that, there are a few years where we have um, floodings in some occasions, and then the soil fertility has gradually decreased. It is like uh, the middle belt. If I talk of middle belt, we talk of Brown Hafu, Techima, Kintampo, Inkranza, Wenchi area, which used to be bread, bread basket in this country, has drastically changed. Now farmers are moving away from producing food crops to producing cashew, cocoa, and other things, which are a bit uh, 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 rain re um, weather resilient. Now the fear is that if these trends will continue, time to come, Ghana will continue to be food insecure. Uh, last year. We made some progress. Uh, we made the MDG one of food security. Um, so it means that we are food secured in five food crop areas. That's maize, cassava, mm. um, um, yam, and then um, some few other, other, other crops. But this trend will gradually change. Mm. Because for last year and this year, we continue to import maize from uh, Burkina and Cote d'Ivoire, which is not a good trend. So we are thinking that we cannot just close our eyes and allow the trend to continue. We need to do something. Now, Ghana forest degrading is 2.3% every year. So we continue to lose our forest line. And all this contributes to the, the, the limited rainfall uh, pattern that we have. Apart from that, the current farming practice, where all our concentration is on industrial agriculture, you just clear the, all the forest, you clear all the land, and then you plant one, one mm -hmm. crop and apply heavy fertilizer, it's not also helping the soils. So we have identified some means or practices that other countries have adopted, and it's helping. And we are thinking that we want to try it. So by doing so, we launched a project in the Brown Half region. We call it Sustainable Agriculture Farming Practice, where we try to integrate food crop farming with tree crops and other livestock. With that, the soil is able to sustain itself. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, you, but you are you are a farmer yourself. Yeah. Your, how is your personal story like? Yeah, for me, you know, I've been I've been a farmer throughout my life. I grew up in a farming community. My parents were farmers, so that was how um, I was schooled. We farm. They use the product to pay my school fees. Okay. So when I was growing from uh, JSS to secondary school to university, I continued to farm on myself. And that's what I sell to, to, to pay for my school fees. And today, I sell farm. I have a yam farm in Salga. Yam. Yeah, I okay. have a maize and cashew farm in Kintampo. I have a maize farm in Tumu. And uh, that's what is um, actually supporting me. Mm. To well, me well, 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 let me engage the Director of Meteorological Services. We'll come back to the challenges that you face. Okay. Uh, peculiar to you, your yam farm, for instance, yeah. or the cashew farm that you have in Kintampo. Uh, but Roland, we've got the Director of Meteorological Services Department, Mr. Kwekwa Yuk, uh, joining us via phone on this conversation. Good morning, sir. Hello, sir. Good morning. Hello, good morning. Yes, sir. Th thanks for... 
Uh, thanks for your time this morning. We're talking about the weather patterns in agriculture, particularly uh, with peasant farmers. Uh, so I'm, I'm sure you are aware of some of the challenges that they face. Is there some kind of collaboration with the meteor department, for instance, and our local farmers? Hello? Hello, sir. Can you hear me, please? No, I can. Okay. So we'll try again. Good morning to you. Is it better? Hello. Uh, we seem to have a little challenge with the telephone line, Roland. Uh, we'll yeah. have to get Hello. In. Can you hear us? Oh, he can't. Okay. So, Mama, you wanted to ask a question? Yes, I wanted to, uh, I mean, is the weather a problem for your yam farm, for instance? It is. Uh, last year, for instance, uh, the number of acres I planned to do for me, is I couldn't do that because within the period, the rain stopped after I did the first planting. It took a very long time. So, most of my maize farm, I even have to recultivate again. For the yam in Kintempo, uh, I mean, in Salga, we had some problems with the uh, rivers that came to attack the farms, apart from uh, the limited rainfall. Um, so last year, yam production was actually very low, and it's affecting majority of farmers. Mm -hmm. This year, the trend seemed to, we are getting good signs, and uh, we are hoping that it will continue, especially for the northern sector. Though the rainfall is not that heavy, mm -hmm. but the, 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 uh, the pattern, it's quite better when it rains today maybe next five days time we get rain next three days so the pattern is quite better we hope that it will continue like that but when you come to um the middle belt the chiman kintempo the rainfall is not quite good so i've i've not been able to do much uh, compared to previous years because after i saw my first three acres <coughs> of maize the rain stopped for a while and then I, it came again, then I, I planted some cashew. Mm. But as we speak now, um, the rain is not coming. So the rest of the plots have not been able to, to plant. All right. Uh, we have to engage the Director of Meteorological Services Department now. Hopefully he can hear us. Mr. Kweku, are you? Can you hear us, please? Hello, sir. Hello. Greetings to you. Is the line better now? Yeah, but okay. quite thing. Let's go ahead. Okay, we apologize for that. I'll try and speak up a bit and see if, if you can hear me. Um, so we're engaging the Peasant Farmers Association. We're talking about some of the challenges that the farmers face today. And rain seems to be a big challenge, the weather. So my question is, is there a certain collaboration between the meteorological agency, for instance, and the farmers so they get to know what the patterns are at what time? Oh, good morning. Um, um Every year, um, before the start of the rain season, Ghana Meteorological Agency comes out with the seasonal forecast. And this year, um, we did say, and the seasonal forecast, we even travel to most parts of the northern uh, part of the country to form the farmers, Ketsi uh, Care International. I don't know if the, uh, the panel were we had a workshop at Tamale. We had one at Tamale. We had another one at uh, Garu Timpani. There was another one at uh, Lambusi. And so we, we, we inform most farmers from the various communities about the pattern of the weather this year. And uh, as is rightly say, that's exactly what we actually came out in terms of the forecast from the Ghana Meteorological Agency that this year we're going to have very short rainy season, especially over the coastal uh, part of, of the country. And for the middle belt, in fact, the rainfall pattern generally wasn't going to be good, except for the northern part of the country. Um, he, he, he was saying that uh, the rains that they are experiencing now are not quite heavy, but uh, the frequency is good. And I think that is the essence of uh, uh, the rainfall pattern for the farming activity. You don't need heavy rain that goes to destroy farm land. But if you get in uh, quite a uh, high frequency of rain, was like to moderate. I think it augurs well for most of the farming activity. And you know, he's talking about Bonga Hapo region, which lies between the north and then the south. Some parts of Bonga Hapo region are experiencing good rain, others are not, because it's 
you you have nothing uh, Dong Apo region has a bit of characteristics of the south and then the north. And so some places get very good in Aden so and I will I would say that for uh, the southern uh, 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 part of the country, the rains are virtually over for the major rain season. And so we are just about to come out with uh, the outlook for the minor rainy season. For, mm. But for the northern part, um, it is expected. And I think um, it will continue to be somewhere uh, October, where the, the rain will virtually come to. Mm. So, sir, what, what kind of season are we in now, and what should we be expecting or experiencing? Yeah, the, you know, the major rainy season for the southern part of the country normally starts from April to uh, somewhere uh, 2nd July. And then the, major, the minor rainy season starts from uh, September, October, November. And so we are virtually at the tail end of the major rainy season. And we are virtually saying that it is over now for most part of the southern uh, part of the country. Uh, those out there over the first, I, I have various families that I get in touch with. They are telling me that the rains are not even uh, uh, falling at all over those places, meaning that it is virtually over. And so we are now entering what is called the letter dry season in Ghana. That is part of July, uh, uh, the second to the uh, second week to the end of July and then the whole of August it, it is turned over most part of West Africa as lesser dry season and that is where the rain actually wouldn't come at all or just some slight rain that I experienced. Instead the, the, the surface temperature conditions are so low and that actually August were well for uh, fishing activities and so this is the time, we are just entering a time where we should ex expect a, a bumper harvest uh, of fish. And, and again, it is a time that the rain actually go down considerably. Yeah. Well, it's very interesting you mentioned um, the period where we have the season, so to speak. But if you look at the last uh, 15 years, or if, if not the last decade, it seemed to have been very indiscriminate in terms of what the patterns have been. Would you say that you still stick to the regular way we measure the seasons? Yeah, I, I would say that uh, it has not deviated so much. What we, we really experience now as, as a departure from the former day, that during the former days, if you say we are in the rainy season, you could get about uh, 25 or more days of rain in a month. For example, if you take June, you should be getting about 25 days or more uh, rainy days within the 30 uh, days in June. But these days, it's not like that. What we are experiencing is that uh, at best, you may get about 15 days. But if you sum the totality of the rainfall uh, amount, you are almost getting the same, which gives an indication that the rain that we are experiencing these days, especially over the southern part of Ghana, are quite heavy. And once it falls, it takes a long time before you get another rain. The former times, it rains almost continuous. And they were not too heavy rain. So that is the difference that we are getting. That is why these days the, the rain that we are getting causes uh, 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 almost always you get flash flood out of part of the rain that we experience. Mm. Uh, Mr. Ayuk, just be on the line because uh, we have uh, our guests in the studio, and Charles is uh, uh, the program officer for the Pearson Farmers Association. Now, what okay. he's saying is it true? Yeah, I think uh, yeah, what he's saying is uh, quite true. Um, in recent years, we realized that there are some occasions we have very heavy downpour. And then after that, it may take more than 10 days before you get uh, another rains again. So the pattern is quite not uh, um, uh, regular, regular. And that is not good for um, our farming practice. In terms of a uh, brown half and northern region, the trend is shifting. And it's to the advantage of uh, those in the northern part of the country. Just like I said, we used to have maize coming from the Chimayi and Kintampo areas. But in recent times, 
we are getting maize from Tumu coming to Techima market and Accra in other places. So the trend is actually shifting, and then we are studying the pattern and then listening to them, and then we also change our practice to see that. Mm, very interesting. So uh, practically, how is it working, uh, you know, the association and Meteo? Yeah, so we just started a project, and then that project is actually looking at all means to address the problem. So we are engaging University of Ghana, who will also be training the farmers in certain farming practices, the agri department, who will be training the farmers certain farming practices, sustainable way of farming, adopting crummy resilient practices. That is using early maturing varieties and varieties that are rain resistant. Mm -hmm. Now with the meteorological services, we are trying to engage their services so that on constant basis, they will continue to provide us with the information. Not only information that can be consumed by national level, but at the local level, because mm -hmm. you go to most of the farming community, they don't understand English or tree. So we are looking at a situation where they'll be able to break down this information to get to the rural community to educate the farmers that at this time when it rains, you need to plant. At this time of the period, you are not supposed to plant. Use this type of crop variety, and then we think that uh, you will get mm -hmm. there. So, Ms. Ayuk, uh, you know, what Charles is saying, is that something that the Meteo uh, services can do for, for our, you know, local farmers, our small farmers? Hello. Hello, sir. Yeah. Did, 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 you, did you hear Charles on the bit about... Uh, the meteorological agency uh, being able to provide them information, information on the ground, uh, not necessarily to persons who can understand English, but the ordinary farmer who may not understand English but needs to know the weather patterns in order to be able to grow what is appropriate at what time. Yes, uh, uh, thank you. Ghana Meteorological Agency is trying hard to reach the farmers directly because of uh, distortion in the information that is it is needed to most of the uh, farmers. And so uh, we, we try as much as possible to have this workshop run every year. And uh, as I said uh, earlier on, it is a taxi of uh, a international. I think you that this is a thing that will take over. It, it will go a long way to help uh, the students farmers. Because as uh, my brother said, you know, the rainfall pattern over the northern part of the country is shifting since 2010, especially with the onset date. Uh, uh, formerly by um, April, you get more part of the uh, uh, northern part of the country uh, experiencing the rain. But now it is not so. It's really shifted by more than one month. And so um, we, we try as much as possible to uh, educate some mm -hmm. of the farmers about uh, the change in the rainfall pattern with uh, mm -hmm. Be before we before we let you show sure, before we let you go sir i just want to find out do you feel that our farmers are equipped enough to adapt to climate change from where you sit yes uh, you know most of them they know that the, the pattern is changing and so uh, there's a need for them to adapt to the changes that is in place and so uh, there's a need for them to also get in touch with uh, dynamic location, the provision of uh, weather forecast, not only for the season, but for even one week. And we trying to also uh, uh, come out with very good resolution. Uh, and, and so maybe 9 kilometers by 9 kilometers, 5 kilometers by 5 kilometers, where you can have site specific uh, information about the climate. Because as of now, we are not able to do that. But we are working hard to get the site specific information for various communities. All right. We're grateful to you, sir, for your time this morning. Uh, that's the Director of Meteorological Services Department, Mr. Kweku. Are you joining us? Uh, on this all-important conversation via phone. But we still do have here Charles uh, Inyamba, who is a program officer, Peasant Farmers Association of Ghana himself, a farmer, and he's been sharing his personal experiences with us as well. Uh, so when do you want to pick up, you know, with Matthew on the information to the ground exactly? When, when are you hoping that this can start? Yeah, I think we just we started. We launched a project in Kintampu. Uh, Meteo department was there, Ayuk was there himself, uh, University of Ghana was there. Uh, we have most of the farmers present. So from here, we are getting back to them 
to engage. Uh, our main concern is how to break the information down mm. to make it usable for the farmers in the community level. Sure. Because if it's us, uh, we, it will even be easy for me to walk into their office and then find out certain information. Mm -hmm. We are talking about the majority of those who are in the rural communities. So from here, we will start the engagement right away. Mm. Uh, we are going to do it in two ways. If we get it, we may break it down ourselves and then disseminate it to the farmers. Okay. Or if it's possible for them to get their person for us to go through the community together, um, these are the ways uh, we are looking at. Apart from that, we will be providing them with training on climate resilience and adaptation. And this training will be done in all the nine districts that the project is covering in half region. We are taking there as a pilot region because, you know, just like the director said, it's in between the northern Ghana and the southern Ghana. Mm. So we'll be able to actually know the changes in both sides. Then we will uh, find an appropriate means of uh, mm. supporting them. Okay. Now, the support is, will be in the area of uh, getting early maturing plant varieties, uh, practices that contribute to climate change, and also their farming um, 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 a period, whether they should plant in May, they should plant in June, or they should plant in April. You know, certain times, you go to most of the places, it will rain, and the farmers will be still waiting. Because they are thinking, oh, this rain, it won't come again. Mm -hmm. But if you get that information, you tell them, look, the first rain that comes, you plant. And then make sure that the plant that you are going to plant will be either three months or four months maturing period. If you go and plant a long maturing plant, and then the, uh, that particular year, the rain will not travel far, then it means that you might not be able to harvest. Sure. So these are the means... Um, we are going to use mm -hmm. to actually address some okay. of the challenges. All right. Uh, we wish you well. We have to leave our conversation here. Uh, but even for us here at uh, Multimedia, there's something special that's happening uh, with the business department. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And, the uh, well, I hope that you'll be there tomorrow too. It's yeah. an event uh, we're putting together at the uh, Ridge Arena Lisa Hotel here okay. in Accra. It is the Joy Business Busy. Uh, transforming Ghana agribusiness to the rescue um, event oh. and it will be the business uh, of agriculture that will be discussed and the whole um, event is supposed to ask the question whether it will help in transforming the economy mm. of Ghana. We're mm. going to have um, from uh, the ministry, the deputy minister, Dr. Al Hassan Ahmed Yakubu, as well as Salom Brantia. He's with them pedigree. They oh, use okay. a certain software to look at the uh, expiry and efficacy of um, products, yeah. especially um, pharmaceutical products, and the yeah. time is 5 p.m. Yeah. But the, the essence of this is to make sure that whether agriculture could be the base um, or the launch pad for us to, one, create a lot more jobs, create a lot more um, capital or perhaps profits, or a lot more, some level of agricultural engineering along the value chain. Do you, what do you think about yeah, it? I think, I think it's a, a great news. And I think uh, if I had this information earlier on, I would have suggested that uh, you invite uh, SMV. SMV is a Netherlands uh, NGO in the country oh. who are actually supporting the same area that you are talking about. Okay. We just had a partnership workshop in uh, Tamale. Uh, they are launching a five-year project, which is actually looking at food security nutrition and post-harvest losses. And these are the issues that they are looking at. So it will be interesting. Mm. You, you invite them. But for yeah. us, we would, uh, it's a very good thing. Mm. Okay. Uh, we would uh, love to participate. I'll carry this information to the office, and then we see how we pick it from there. All we right. hope that in future programs, uh, you give us well, official So this is what we'll yeah, do. We, will. Well, yeah. we make sure that we create the needed synergy and collaboration yeah, for that you. Would be but great. earlier on, you also mentioned something about how perhaps we're adopting technology or the practices from the best uh, or the developed countries in two hours. Yeah. And we're, we're not trying to situate it within our contest. Yeah. But don't you think now we have to make sure that we move into the large plantation agricultural... That will uh, not region. address the problem. It will, it will worsen the problem. You know, agriculture alone contributes 30% to the climate change that we are talking about. And this is because we continue to use the industrial farming practices where you clear everything, you put heavy chemicals and other things. Apart from the health issues that we have with these chemicals, um, the implication to soil fertility is, is not good for us. So we are thinking that if this is not working, why are we not looking at alternatives? Because it's not only about producing today. If you produce today, you are not able to produce the same tomorrow. What happened to the future? Yeah. 
Mm. Well, good question. Well, Roland, also at this event uh, will be Dr. Charles Toto, who is with the CSIR and ASETS, and David Asiyama with Agro Mindset. It's at Alisa Hotel. It's tomorrow, July 19, at 5 p.m. The Rich Arena Alisa Hotel Accra is the venue. Uh, transforming Ghana, agribusiness to the rescue. That's the question that we're asking. All right, uh, and we will end this conversation uh, with some information that we also picked up, understanding climate uh, smart agriculture. But before that, the launch of the late Professor Alexander Edum Kwapong's uh, memoir is scheduled to take place today at the ISA Conference Hall at 4 p.m. prompt. The event will be chaired by the Vice Chancellor of the University of Ghana, Professor Ernest Aite. Uh, Professor Alexander Edum Kwapong was the first Ghanaian Vice Chancellor of the University of Ghana from 1966 to 1976, and the memoir is titled A Life in Education. The book chronicles his early life in a Kropong, Achimota School, King's College at Cambridge University, through to the professional work as Vice Chancellor of the University of Ghana, Vice Rector of the United Nations University in Tokyo, Japan, and more. So it's 4 p.m. at the ISEC Conference Hall. You're invited to be part of this. Uh, to end our conversation this morning, we'll bring you this uh, uh, short documentary on understanding climate smart agriculture. Still ahead, we know that the voters uh, registration, uh, the voters row is opening today for all of us, starting today for all of us to go and check uh, for our names and also uh, do well to delete persons who are dead, who have passed on, but their names are still in the register. Uh, and also, if your name was part of the NHIS card registrants, remember that your name has been deleted. And today is also the beginning of that re-registration exercise. We'll bring you a lot more when we touch base with Derek Eccles-Sam, who's roving this morning for us.